Hey, this is a video for 8.10, Waste Reduction Methods. So go ahead and check out the overview and set up your guided notes. So you've probably heard about the three R's. They are reduce, reuse, and recycle. And as they are considered in this order, they have an increasing amount of energy input. Now reducing has the least amount of energy. It is the most sustainable. We are lowering the amount of input or energy input for raw materials or the amount of raw materials required. We're also reducing the amount of energy that we need to harvest or obtain these materials. Now reusing something, we are not making any new adjustments. And some examples, we can reuse glass jars. If you bought pickles, you can repurpose the, the glass jar to hold nuts and bolts for home improvement projects. You might also hold food items like oatmeal or pasta. You can also reuse wood pallets. Wood pallets are those big wooden squares that uh, are used for shipping. And you can repurpose them and build lawn furniture, for example. The other thing you could do is reuse plastic bags for pet waste. Now, one of the benefits of living in New York City, uh, living in Brooklyn, especially when you have a lot of gentrification happening, is you have people that throw things away. They throw things away because they don't like them. Maybe they've outgrown them or they just think they don't work anymore. Um, I found a lot of items for the classroom. I found a lot of, lot of items, especially in my backyard. Most of my backyard is found with things that I have found on the street. And this is one example. I have this beautiful dodecahedron, which is this 12-sided uh, object, and it is glass. It is pretty large. It, you, I use it as a greenhouse. I also found this mirror that goes on top that acts as a like a cover for it, and these two iron like lawn chairs. So this these are examples of items that I have found on the street in my neighborhood. Other things, uh, just when you're looking, if you do find any items on the street. Don't take anything that has upholstery or fabric um, because you can find bed bugs. And that is the easiest way to transfer bed bugs from one place to another. And they're very difficult to get rid of. So uh, if you are picking up items, definitely talk to your, your uh, adults in your household to make sure that it is okay to bring something inside. Now, when we recycle, we are processing these items into new products entirely. It still is taking energy to uh, sort these items, to ship these items, and to process them. And it should be used as a last resort. Obviously, the very final resort is throwing something away into a landfill. Um, but recycling would be the last resort of the three R's. Now, we have two types of recycling. We have open loop and closed loop recycling. Open loop is when we take an item like a plastic bottle and we manufacture something else, like, for example, Lego bricks or playground equipment. And closed loop is when we take something like a bottle and make another bottle. Now, oftentimes with paper and plastic, they are often involved in open loop recycling because when you recycle plastic and paper, oftentimes the, the quality is degraded, so it cannot be manufactured into the exact same thing. Now, that's not always true, but that is often uh, the case. Uh, technology is being developed. Um, there are more plastic bottles that are being made from other plastic bottles. Now, closed-loop recycling is perfect for glass and uh, aluminum especially because it takes less energy, for example, to process the aluminum, to recycle the aluminum, than to obtain bauxite, which is the ore in which aluminum is found, and then to refine that bauxite and then manufacture aluminum products. Now, benefits of open and closed loop recycling is it takes less uh, extraction of resources. Like, for example, you don't have to take bauxite. You don't have to manufacture the, the glass from scratch. Some drawbacks are it doesn't eliminate the demand for oil. We still require oil for uh for powering the cars, for, you know, fossil fuel combustion, for transportation, but also for, we're not completely eliminating, um, we might need to refine some of these plastics with additional plastic, and that would require the use of additional petroleum to make that plastic. Also, it is not cost effective. Um, with the exception, um, aluminum is pretty cost effective, but plastic recycling is not cost effective. Now, e-waste is something that we really need to consider. Um, we have 
in electronic materials. We have lead, mercury, cadmium, and cobalt, and they are all hazardous. Many of these are endocrine disruptors. And they're also sent, this e-waste is sent to Asia and Africa because it is, there have, they have fewer environmental protections. It's also really cheap and you can pay people less there. Um, there's less protection for the workers as well. They are not unionized. Um, many people are living at or below the poverty level. So, uh, this is considered an easy source of income for these people where they will mine these electronic, um, waste, this electronic waste and obtain maybe a motherboard or obtain the wires that can be then melted down and the metals can be obtained from that. Planned obsolescence is when you have an iPhone, for example, and it no longer works, an older iPhone no longer works with the iOS or the apps. So planned obsolescence was a way of tech companies to get you to buy new products every year or every couple of years. And uh, tech companies have been under a lot of scrutiny recently, especially Apple was sued a few years ago um, for... Uh, forcing people basically to buy new iPhones because they would slow down their iOS. Now this is all managed by RICRA, the Resource uh, Conservation and Recovery Act, which basically monitors uh, hazardous waste items from cradle to grave, from the manufacturing to the disposal of them. Now one thing we can do is we can compost our items. This is an example of my compost bin that I have in the backyard. You can see up here, we got little worms that are inside there. Um, but I use the composting uh, for my food items and a lot of my paper items. Um, it's for organic waste decomposition. Uh, you can use this compost to improve your soil quality. I don't use this for, um, I don't use the compost to uh, in my gardening just because I don't know if some of the paper products that I'm using have anything that might be toxic. Also, it is connected to the ground. Like there's nothing separating it from the ground in Greenpoint and the ground is extremely toxic. So I use this for like my, my house plants. Uh, it can help with fertility. It can help with water holding capacity. Remember organic material helps the soil hold more water. It can also help with the cation exchange capacity because when we have uh, different particles that have different charges, it can help hold these cations like potassium, like sodium. And it requires oxygen. So you need to mix up this compost. You need to stir it up. So every day or so, every couple of days, I will take a shovel and I will kind of turn the, the compost around. Now I need, in a compost, you need brown waste and green waste. That's what they call it. But brown waste is carbon-based waste and green waste is nitrogen-based waste. So you, brown waste could be like paper products and green waste could be like food products. Now we also can reclaim areas uh, where landfills originally sat. And this is a lot of Staten Island um, parts of Staten Island used to be landfill, and now it has been reclaimed into parkland. And first of all, it's covered with clay and with soil to prevent any of the leachate from escaping. Um, you want to plant native plants and shallow-rooted plants. If they are trees, they should be trees that have shallow roots and not long tap roots, so it will go down into those toxins. We don't want to, like, disrupt the um, landfill because that the trash is basically going to be there for several hundred years. Um, this will prevent erosion from this area, and it can be converted into parks or public spaces. Uh, we need to have continued support because methane will still be released, so they will need to analyze and collect that methane. And what I would like you to do now is respond to this check for understanding. And for free response practice, I want you to propose a solution to reduce levels of e-waste. I hope that this video was informative. I thank you for your attention, and I will see you soon.